In this mini lecture, I'm going to explore and explain the Connected Learning Framework presented in the Connected Learning Report, an agenda for research and design written by Mimi Ito et al. In a world of global interconnection and rapid change, effective learning is lifelong and integrated into the real world of work, civic engagement and social participation. We can't expect young people to be able to bank knowledge and skills from school and apply them to a stable world of work later in life. This is the Connected Learning Report, which was authored in 2013 by Mimi Ito and her colleagues. It's freely available online and I would encourage you to Google Connected Learning Ito and access the PDF document. It's a fantastic introduction to what connected learning is and what it looks like in a variety of contexts. It includes case studies which demonstrate how young people experience connected learning and is an important source document for anyone interested in expanding their knowledge of what connected learning is, why it's relevant for learners and how technologies enable connected learning environments. This report was inspired by the observation that there is a significant gap between students' experience of formal education, their personal interests, and their peer culture. The framework presented in this report draws these areas together. It suggests ways that students' personal interests and participation in peer culture can be connected to their academic and civic learning goals. Acknowledging the different aspects of students' life and drawing these together to create a more authentic, meaningful and ultimately more powerful learning experience is not a new concept. Jane Addams found some success with what she termed socialised learning when she and Ellen Gates Starr built Hull House in Chicago in 1889. She was working with recently arrived immigrants who were either unable to access or disengaged from formal schooling because they'd found it so different to their lived experience. Hull recognised that learning was not limited to the classroom and a fixed curriculum. And so she created a community where the immigrants could learn about their new culture, life skills and local issues. And by doing so, also develop their language skills and other basic academic skills they needed to live successfully in America. From 1889 to 2018, Life is radically different and yet human nature and learning may be the same. Both Adams and Mimi Ito and her colleagues have been inspired to develop new ways of enabling individuals to access learning when the structures of formal learning are not meeting someone's needs. Whether recently arrived immigrants in 1889 or disengaged teenagers in the 21st century, tapping into personal interests and the strength of friendship and collaboration helps to create meaningful and authentic learning experiences. Just the way that we can achieve this has changed. Connected learning is a pedagogical approach underpinned by networked learning and connectivism framed around the values of equity, full participation and social connection. The Connected Learning Report provides a framework for understanding how we might bring about this type of learning in practice so that learners have equitable access, are challenged to take active part in their learning and are able to learn and connect with others. This is the framework for connected learning presented in the Connected Learning Report. Let's go through each section in more detail. As I said earlier, the Connected Learning Report was published in 2013 and it's currently in the process of being revised. The first part of the revision to be released renames the contexts as elements of connected learning. The concepts remain the same, but the terminology appears broader. Instead of being peer supported, it is now relationships. Instead of academically oriented, it is now opportunities. I believe that this reflects a broadening application of connected learning beyond schools and young people to higher education, libraries, 
and any other learning context where people pursue interest-driven learning with others. Whether referred to as context or elements, these are the most defining aspects of connected learning. Connected learning occurs when students are able to draw together these contexts or elements in the process of their learning. The contexts are that learning is peer supported, interest powered and academically oriented. This recognises that rich and meaningful learning occurs in social settings where young people can contribute, share and give feedback with others whom they like and respect. These could be their peers, but could also be trusted adults, including their teachers. Having the opportunity con to construct learning collaboratively through active engagement makes the learning process meaningful and engaging. The second context recognises that when a subject is personally interesting, learners achieve much higher, learner, higher order learning outcomes. We know ourselves when we can see the relevance or purpose of learning something or we're highly interested in it, the learning process seems to come more naturally. Young people especially can have very passionate personal interests. We just need to see how involved they can become in different fandoms, sports or other interests to know how motivated and committed they can be. When these learning contexts can be connected to academic or learning goals, civic engagement or career opportunities, learning can reach its full potential. It sometimes can take imagination and hard work on the part of the teacher to make these connections, but when they're made, amazing things can happen. One example is a fantastic article about year three students who literally saved their local environment, Black Mountain, through their classroom inquiry. They lived in a small mining town and the local mountain was due to be strip mined, which would not only destroy the natural environment, but also reduce tourism. They became involved in writing letters and campaigning to save Black Mountain and in the process not only helped stop the mining but also met their curricular requirements through their activities. The core properties of connected learning experiences are that it is production centred, has a shared purpose and is openly networked. These core properties are where digital and social technologies can play a greater learning role in learning. With digital technologies, learners have a host of ways to express and create new knowledge. Giving young people the opportunity to create more freely allows them to demonstrate and share their learning in ways that previously were not necessarily possible. Scripting, directing and producing a short film, recording a podcast, creating digital artwork, there are so many possibilities to respond to academic assessments beyond the essay and the PowerPoint presentation. Free apps enable green screen filming, music studios in your bedroom, animation, photography, infographics, getting students to construct expressions of their learning in ways that align with their interests and passions is more possible now than ever before. Students can publish to the world and get meaningful and high quality feedback from their peers and from others outside of the school context. This may not be appropriate for every learning activity or even for every student, but the opportunity is there for students if it will enrich their learning. They can become involved in online communities that enable cross-generational and cross-cultural learning, where the connections are not made due to geography or time, but by a shared purpose, the second core property of connected learning. Of course, this requires digital and social network literacy and the capacity to find, interact with and maintain genuine connections with others in online communities or groups. Being able to create and express learning using digital technologies links directly to the third core property, openly networked. Online platforms and digital tools make learning resources through the variety of media more accessible and they also provide a real life audience for student work. Learners have the opportunity to begin developing a portfolio of their work or developing a high quality digital presence. The design principles for connected learning inform how connected learning environments can be created. 
These might be the most useful for those who are looking for ways to build aspects of connected learning into their practice, even within quite restrictive curricular or institutional limitations. The first is that everyone can participate. This is about accessibility, recognising that there may be barriers to entry for learners and trying to ensure that these are removed if at all possible. For example, providing offline as well as online options to connect with others, offering audiobook as well as regular book options for those who struggle with reading, or being available to meet at different times on different days. One of the key driving forces behind connected learning is social justice and access for all learners, so planning inclusive learning opportunities is important. Learning happens by doing. Planning active learning opportunities and engaging students in the construction of their responses is one way in ways that are meaningful for them is a part of connected learning. Taking advantage of technology to provide a range of ways to respond is one way to do this. Connected learning is not passive. It's about the student becoming involved and taking ownership of their learning because they're interested and engaged. Challenge is constant. It's the interest that drives the challenge. Learners are constantly challenged because they need to extend their knowledge and skills in order to learn more. The best way to understand this is by looking at the way a computer game is designed to be continually challenging. The gamer will play at a particular level and once they begin to master that level, they'll work on developing their skills to meet harder challenges at the next level. Look at the effort that young people will put into developing those skills. They'll watch walkthroughs on YouTube, read FAQs and wikis, they'll talk on forums and watch streams of games on Twitch. This is an example where the learner has a need to know and those who have mastered certain skills have a need to share. Everything is interconnected in connected learning environments. Learners can move across different platforms, they can share their learning in different contexts, and they can bring ideas and concepts from one space to another. Rather than learning being separated into isolated silos, like it's traditionally presented in schools through different subjects, learners can transfer their learning and access the resources they need from one space to another easily and naturally. Although connected learning does not require technology, social technologies and digital connected technologies enhance the accessibility and potential to amplify connected learning experiences. It enables learners to find others with shared purpose who may not live within their local area, provides a wealth of resources in multiple media types, and allows learners to express and share their learning in a wide variety of ways to a potentially global audience. Technology may give those who previously were marginalised or who had limited exposure to learning opportunities a voice and a medium through which to be heard. The connected learning framework does not depend on, but leverages and acknowledges the role that social technologies might play in creating authentic and accessible learning opportunities for young people. For more resources, please see the Introduction to Connected Learning Padlet and please think about downloading the Connected Learning Report for free off online.